Shrata Walker was born in 1995, which is in the Polgar district of Maharashtra, India. Shrata lived with her parents, Vikash Madan Walker and Suman mm. Madan Walker, and a younger brother, Sri J. Walker. Shraddha was pursuing a bachelor's degree in mass media at the New English School of Veva College in Virar. In their adolescence, Shraddha and her brother witnessed frequent fighting between their mother and father. Finally, in 2016, her father Vikash would eventually separate from his wife, Suman, and would move into a house with his mother, away from his kids and his soon-to-be ex-wife. But in the same locality, Shraddha and her brother would stay in the family home with their mother. In 2018, Shraddha decided to take on full-time work in order to remove some of the burden from her mother. Living in a small city of Polgar, which lacked the myriad of resources that a big city would boast, Shraddha decided to move to the metropolis of Mumbai to look for loftier job opportunities to enrich not only her life but that of her family as well. With the help of a friend, Shraddha moved to Mumbai and rented a modest flat. She was able to secure an entry-level job at a call center in a multinational company in Malad, Mumbai. As Shraddha was a newcomer to the city, she was looking forward to making friends. And while working at a new job, Shraddha met Aftab Amin Punewala. It is unclear how the two initially met. Some sources claim that Shraddha met Aftab via the Bumble app, while others claim that they simply made at work. Aftab worked at the same company as Shraddha. Coincidentally, they had lived in the same area of Vasai as Shraddha before he too moved to Mumbai for a job. This made for a fast friendship. Aftab had done his schooling from Asti Francis High School in Vasai and had completed his bachelor's in management studies at Alice Raheja College. Aftab liked cooking and had an Instagram account dedicated to food named with the Insta handle of Hungry Chokro, where he would review restaurants and various eateries. Shraddha and Aftab started spending much of their free time together. They would regularly talk on the phone and meet in person outside of work. Aftab shared Shraddha's passion for traveling and love of hiking, which brought them closer both in friendship and in romance. Soon Shraddha and Aftab would make their coupling official and Aftab would eventually ask Shraddha to move in with him. Together they would take out a lease on a flat in the Kinney complex in Naigao East. In 2019, Shraddha decided to visit her mother in Palgar. Shraddha told her mother about her relationship with Aftab. She told her mother that she was falling in love with him and they were housed together in an official relationship. She also told her mother she wanted to marry Aftab. Shraddha's mother, however, was against her relationship. In a later interview, Shraddha's father said, my daughter told my wife in 2019 that she wants to be in a live-in relationship with Aftab Punewala. My wife and I told her not to because I'm Hindu and that boy is Muslim. We don't do inter-religion marriage. Shraddha got angry with her parents and a fight ensued. Her parents recall that she stormed out of her house saying, I am 25 years old now and I have every right to make my own decisions. Shraddha went back to Mumbai and cut off all ties with her family. Her mother tried contacting Shraddha several times and tried to dissuade her from marrying Aftab. However, Shraddha was adamant she wanted to marry Aftab regardless of her family's beliefs. In January of 2020, Shraddha's mother died of natural causes. Shraddha went back to her family home for her mother's funeral and reportedly told her father that she had been fighting with Aftab and that he had been physically abusing her. However, she made the caveat that Aftab would always apologize for his actions and eventually everything would go back to normal. Shraddha's father told her to leave Aftab. 
and move back to Versailles. But Shraddha insisted that Aftar was not a bad person and that she still wanted to marry him. The relationship between Shraddha and her father had been strained ever since her father started living separately. She would not talk to him and he recalls that the only updates he would get of her were from her social media posts. After her mother's funeral, Shraddha moved back to her flat in Mumbai. In total, Shraddha talked to her father on the phone only three times after her mother's death. The third call would be the last time that Shraddha's father ever heard from her. While both would get updates about Shraddha's life. From Shraddha's social media posts, Shraddha would cut all contact from her father and brother. Shraddha was active on Instagram and WhatsApp. She would regularly post pictures of food and drinks and WhatsApp status would change frequently. On these posts, her brother and father would know that Shraddha was doing okay day to day. With no family to turn to, Aftab became the only emotional anchor in Shraddha's life. Aftab was by her side after her mother's death. Shraddha's friend in an interview said, Shraddha used to tell me that Aftab would cook for her, even feed her with his own hands. But she also told me how the same man would trash her brutally at other times. Shraddha and Aftab would have arguments regarding financial issues. Shraddha would work to pay for their living expenses for much of the time. Aftab would most of the time stay home and do nothing. He was never able to hold a job. Shraddha reportedly also accused Aftab of cheating. She said that she caught Aftab talking to other women on dating apps several times, which resulted in several fights. However, every time there would be an argument and fight, Aftab would later say sorry to Shraddha and she would eventually forgive him. Despite all the violent fights, Shraddha still wanted to marry him and start a family, but Aftab kept putting it off. Aftab had also claimed to friends that he felt Shraddha was pressuring him into marriage. A point of contention, he said, which often escalated their arguments to larger fights. By mid-2020, Aftab's parents got to know about the relationship. Aftab's parents were also against their being together and dissuaded him from an inter-religion marriage. However, he was adamant like Shraddha. In October of 2020, the couple moved from their apartment in Naingao to a regal cooperative housing society in Versailles. Reportedly, in the rental application, they described themselves as a married couple. Shraddha had not talked about Aftab's violent outbursts to her friends. It was only in November of 2020 that she called one of them and told them about Aftab's abusive behavior. The friend said, Shraddha reached out to me after being beaten up by Aftab. My friend and I went to their flat and confronted Aftab and threatened to file a case against him. Shraddha stayed for two days at the house of a common friend, but then she again went back to him. I did not know what influence he had on her, but one thing was clear. She loved him and was emotionally dependent on him. On November of 21st, 2020, after being assaulted, yet again, Shraddha went with a friend to Tulinch police station in Nala Sopara to file a complaint. In the complaint later to the police, Shraddha said that Aftab had been abusing her and beating her and said that he even attempted to kill her through suffocating her. She further stated that he scares and blackmails me that he will kill me, cut me in pieces and throw me away. It's been six months that he has been hitting me and I did not have the guts to go to the police because he would threaten to kill me. In the letter, Shraddha claimed that Aftab's parents visited the couple on weekends and that they were aware that he beat her. But she submitted the letter and the police asked her to get a medical exam for the official record. However, Shraddha changed her mind prior to doing so, most likely her friends opposed out of mortal fear. The police said that Shraddha had filed an application but she did not proceed further with the complaint as she neglected to 
file and a fire. And a fire is the first information report used by police organizations to try cases. It is unclear, though, why Shraddha chose not to pursue her police report further. But some sources claim that Aftab arrived at the station and entreated her to take back the complaint before submission. Otherwise, he claimed that he would kill himself, while other sources claim that Shraddha never proceeded further due to Aftab's parents making the promise that Aftab would move out of the apartment. Even after all this, Shraddha stayed with Aftab, and regular arguments and fights continued throughout the year of 2021. Shraddha would pressure Aftab for marriage, but Aftab was reluctant, which led to frequent fights, often turning physical yet again. In 2022, in an effort to renew the relationship, they decided to move out of Mumbai and shift their lives to Delhi for better job opportunities and possibly to start a new life away from their families. But before moving, they decided to go on a hiking trip to Himachal Pradesh as both enjoyed hiking and they hoped this trip would be a turning point for their relationship. According to one of her friends, Shraddha had told him that she had saved him a small amount of money, which she hoped would last the couple for at least two months. They had hoped to find a job in Delhi after returning from their hiking trip. On 6th May 2022, the couple left for their brief rugged vacation, arriving back to their new home city of Delhi on May 8th. They checked into a hotel and stayed at the hotel for one to two days. On 11th or 12th of May, the couple went to a common friend who lived in Chatarpur. The friend helped them find and rent an apartment in Chatarpur. The couple shifted to the new apartment soon after. They hoped this would be the beginning of their new life. However, the problems they had in their relationship continued in Delhi. Frequent fights would occur about trivial matters. Shraddha's friends and family had no idea that she had moved to Delhi. Shraddha's father and brother used to get updates about her life from her social media posts. However, by September of 2022, Shraddha hadn't posted anything for many months. Worried, Shadda's father and brother tried contacting her several times. However, her phone had been switched off. They contacted Shraddha's friends and they told them that Shraddha and one of the friends told them that Aftab had moved to Delhi a few months prior and had been staying and working there. However, they hadn't had any contact with Shraddha for the last few months and told them that her phone had been switched off for some time. Now extremely worried, Shraddha's father reported her missing to the Mumbai police station in September of 2022. The police started their investigation and soon tracked down Aftab living in the same Chatterpur apartment. He was called to the Mumbai police station for questioning. He told police that Shraddha does not live with him anymore. He claimed that she left with another lover on 18th of May and that he does not know about her whereabouts. The police did not pursue him further, thinking that he was just a depressed boyfriend whose girlfriend left with another man. When the Mumbai police were not able to find any leads, they transferred the case to Delhi police as Delhi was the last known location of Shraddha. Shraddha's father traveled to Delhi in early November and gave every little detail that he knew to the Delhi police. Delhi police went to Aftab's apartment in Chatterpur and questioned him. He again claimed that Shraddha left with a lover and that he does not know where she was. He also told police to find her quickly as he was worried and he had tried to contact her but to no avail. Police then checked Aftab's call records and found that after 18th of May, he had not contacted Shraddha at all. Police also found that Aftab had told his landlord a different story than what he told to the police about why Shraddha was not with him. Suspicions immediately fell on Aftab. He was then taken to the police station and interrogated. During this interrogation, Aftab broke down and confessed to killing Shraddha. On the night of 18th May, 
Just three days after moving into the apartment, Aftab claims that Shraddha started pressuring him to marry her. Aftab did not want to. They started fighting and it turned violent. During the fight, Shraddha started screaming at him and in an extreme rage. Aftab recalls that he held her neck and choked her. According to Aftab, he was trying to silence her. However, by the time he took his hand off Shraddha's neck, Shraddha was dead. Aftab told police that even though he realized that he had just killed Shraddha, he was oddly relaxed. Aftab continued and said that he slept that night in the same room where he had killed Shraddha. He then woke up next day and started planning regarding how to dispose of her body. Aftab loved watching crime videos and he admitted to the police that he was inspired by the American TV series Dexter. So the next day he went to the market and brought a new refrigerator. The following day he went out and purchased a saw, plastic bags, bleach and a backpack and also a few chemicals from different shops. All the while, Shraddha's body was still in their apartment. He then dragged her body into the bathroom and then began chopping it into very small pieces. He then put them into plastic bags and put the plastic bags in the freezer. He would store the rest of her body in the lower compartment of the refrigerator, where he also kept his groceries. To mask the smell in the apartment, he lit several incense sticks and used disinfectants and chemicals. He also utilized several chemicals as well as bleach to wash the bathroom so that no blood stains could be detected by the forensics. According to police, Aftab's search history contained searches like how to destroy a body, how to remove blood stains, and how to decompose a body. Aftab recalled that after killing Shraddha, the breaking down of her body took 10 hours to complete. He recalls his exhaustion at the end of the arduous task and says that after he was done, he drank a beer, smoked some cigarettes and proceeded to take a shower. Aftab told police that after completely chopping Shraddha's body off, he was tired but hungry, so he ordered food to be delivered at his home. Aftab reportedly was fond of ordering from local restaurants and apps such as Zomato or other online food delivery apps. Police noted in the aftermath of his crime that he would always order for two people. In order to deter suspicion, he would go on to eat the food and put the leftovers in the very same refrigerator in which he was storing his girlfriend's body. On 25th of May, Aftab got up around 1 to 2 a.m. in order to take out a few plastic bags with the body parts. He put them in a backpack and took it with him. He would then walk to the Meroli forest area, which was about 20 to 30 minute walk from his apartment. There in the forest, he dumped the remains. He would not just abandon the plastic bags, but he would empty them so that the remains on the forest floor would decompose faster. He would then separately discard the plastic bags. After dumping the parts, he went back to his apartment and he had the audacity to make a note of it like how many body pieces he had thrown away he would make a rough note of where he dumped each and every body part the police would later find his diary in his apartment for the next 10 to 15 days till 5th june he would wake up at night take out a few of the plastic bags with the body parts and throw them in the forest he meticulously planned parts to dispose of first depending upon which part it starts decomposing at the earliest on june 5th he dumped shraddha's head but before that he poured kerosene over it and lit it on fire so that it becomes unidentifiable even if the head is found he disposed of the remainder of the parts in several different areas of the city after reportedly dumped the tools he used in the Marali forest, police were in shock as to how he was able to do all of this in an area which is very densely populated. Even his neighbors were surprised as they had no idea that Shraddha had even been living there. While he was dumping the body parts, Aftab also started using Shraddha's phone and pretended to be her. 
He would reply to friends on WhatsApp and he would even post on social media several times as Shraddha so that her friends and family would not be suspicious. Police also found that during this time, Aftar was active on dating sites such as Bumble. He met a woman through this app and invited her to his house. She stayed the night with him all the while Shraddha's body parts and her head was still in his refrigerator. The woman, however, was unaware of this. Police noted that Aftar was strangely calm and relaxed during this interrogation. According to police sources, there was no remorse visible on his face during his interrogation. It was later found that Shraddha's phone was last active on October 23rd after Aftar reportedly threw her phone into Vasai Creek, Mumbai. He did this when he was called to the Mumbai police station for questioning in October when Shraddha's father had finally reported her missing. Also, Shraddha's phone was used on May 26 in order to transfer 54000 from Shraddha's bank account to Aftab's account. Aftab had claimed that Shraddha had left him on May 18th, only carrying her phone and that he had no contact with her since. The location of the bank transfer also turned out to be in Chhatapur area. Besides this, on May 31st, there was a chat with her friend from Shraddha's Instagram account. When the police found out the location of Shraddha's phone, it turned out to be in Chalarpur. When questioned why Shraddha's phone's location was traced to his house, even though he claimed that Shraddha took her phone with her, Aftab could not answer. It was at this moment that Aftab revealed the truth. I think this is where you should put his confession like maybe flip it so that he admits to the details after their suspicious. At the end, it took only six months for anyone to actually realize that Shraddha was dead. By that time, most of the body parts had decomposed. Police were able to recover 13 bone fragments from the Meroli forest and they were sent for forensic testing. On December 15, 2022, a forensic report stated that the bone samples found in the forest matched the DNA of Shraddha, Walker's father, Vikas Walker, confirming that the remains did belong to Shraddha. Shraddha's head, however, has yet to be found. The police have not also found the murder weapon. The investigators found weapons at Aftab's flat, including knives and a handsaw, but they are yet to be conclusively linked to the crime. Police conducted a forensic testing of Aftab's apartment and were able to retrieve traces of blood, even though he had cleaned his apartment several times with chemicals and bleach. On December 23, 2022, the traces of blood retrieved from the apartment were confirmed to belong to Shraddha Walker. The two forensic reports were crucial in the investigations as police so far did not have concrete evidence against Aftab. The case heavily relied on Aftab's confession and circumstantial evidence which are not admissible in court. Aftab could have easily said in court that his confession were coerced and the police would have no choice but to let Aftab go. The Delhi police are scrambling to find corroborative evidence that would help in the investigation and result in a conviction. The investigation is currently ongoing, I believe. Shraddha's heartbroken family continues to hold out hope that the murderer will be brought to justice.